Morning folks, this week's video I'll be looking at some alternate ways to set up grow beds, some methods I've sort of played around with in the past. But to begin with, we'll uh, have a bit of a quick look at the fish to show you they're alright because the sun's shining in their tank this morning. So the fish really don't want to play ball by the looks of it. So here's a bit of a gander at some footage I shot earlier in the week. Uh, they're doing really well. Uh, they're only feeding in the afternoons because it takes a while for the water temperature to get up to around about that 22 degree mark. So hopefully in the next couple of weeks as the water warms up we'll be able to give you a better look at the fish feeding. So I thought we'd start off with this little bathtub bed. So just for you folks who haven't seen this little grow bed yet, now what I basically have is a bathtub. It's got a drain coming out the plug hole and it's flowing constantly into the sump tank there. Uh, in the bed itself I have just some clay pebbles to stop any algae growing on the surface and I have the delivery pipe uh, buried down here underneath some clay for the same reason. Uh, in the bed I have um, three root pouches, um, any grow bag would do the, pretty much all the same thing and in there I've got some different media. I've got coconut coir in this one and a couple of spuds. I've got potting mix in this one and I have clay balls in this one and yeah just um, in the clay balls around the side I popped another potato and a couple of water chestnuts. Now uh, the main reason I wanted to have a crack at this was just to see how well potatoes grow in aquaponics um, but the other thing I wanted to trial is using soil in aquaponics. Uh, now this method of growing is sometimes called dual root zone. Um, Steve uh, over on Potent Ponics, I'll put a link uh, down in the description to a video that explains a lot better than I can, uh, but he pretty much all uses this or has trialed this method uh, for years now and he seems to get really good results so I thought I'd have a bit of a crack at it. Uh, the beauty of growing with this method is not only do you get the nutrient rich water coming from the fish that is irrigating the bottom, but you also get the um, mycorrhiza and all the beneficial bacteria that like to live in soil and they're providing extra nutrients to the plants. Now if you recall earlier or well, through winter here pretty much well um, the fish slow down the feeding, the little jade perch over there, or big jade perch now, uh, so not a lot of nutrients are making it through to the plants so you end up with some nutrient deficiency and what I like about using the soil method is a lot of those nutrients will be in the soil themselves. Now the beauty of um, using this method is, as Steve mentions in the video, link below, is that you can actually dose with liquid nutrients as well. Say if you make up your own um, IMO, natural farming liquid solutions or fertilizers, you can add them in here and those inoculants or fertilizers will just stay within the pouch. So if you get really down to the nitty gritty of it, you can build up a fertilizer for a particular variety of plant add it to the pouch and you know, or the container, pot, whatever you're using, and you know it's not going to go through to the rest of the system. It's definitely something I've been interested in for a long time. In fact, um, Larry has a video on his, a uh, series of videos on his channel where he's got a flow through wicking bed system, very similar to the earthen beds that Paul Van talked about years ago. Um, so that's also another technique I'd really like to try. I don't know if we're going to try it this time around, um, when we build up the new um, systems over in that little greenhouse area once we tidy up all our mess and all that. Um, so I don't know if I'll get enough space to try that method but this um, dual root zone using pouches in beds definitely something I'm interested in. Um, if you want to check out how these pouches were put in, the soil one in particular, there will be a link up there and down in the description if you wanted to check that out. But that's one method I'm definitely really interested in trying and how I'll be setting it up is a series of pots in one of these black uh, beds. I got a series of these large black grow beds, they're about 600 litres ish and um, I would like to set up at least one of these with a dual root zone style system and the other one I'd actually like to try sand um, bed gardening or it's called IAVS if you do it to their specifications but actually using a sand as a grow media as well as bio filter and the solids filter uh, to grow your plants. Now um, there is a group on Facebook and Gary Donaldson has a um, website as well dedicated to it with a lot of the technical um, data from Mark Mc McMurtry, the gentleman who um, started off the whole aquaponics and sand gardening um, methodology. So yeah, check them out. Um, links again down in the description. So it's yeah, trialing a few different things in at least one system because I would like to have two systems down there. And the other system is just going to be a basic um, single loop or split flow, haven't made up my mind yet, just like um, these beds here. 
basically a, um, an expanded um, clay, or you could use rock if you want to use rock, and just have the water flowing through as we normally do with a normal aquaponic system. So uh, my one reservation though, especially using the soil and sand, is our summer storms can be rather um, <laughs> uh, ferocious with a lot of rain coming down. And I am a little bit concerned about a lot of um, um, nutrients coming through from the soil and potentially fouling up the um, aquaponic system. Um, but as, uh, as Bruce from Aussie Fish said when I was up there, where do fish live? Fish live in a muddy river. So as long as I don't have anything toxic in the water, these little fellas in here should be okay. Oh, they're just lazing around. It's still a little bit too cold to feed them. So they're just chilling for a little while. This afternoon, the water temp will get up around about 22, 23 degrees Celsius. Then I'll pop some food in then. For anyone who is new to aquaponics or new to the channel, just thought I'd let you know that I have a guide available. There will be a link pop up there and also down in the description. It's a very interactive guide. It comes in a number of languages, Spanish, Portuguese, Hindi, um, Chinese, in both captions and spoken word as well. I sound very funny in different languages to tell you the truth, slightly effeminate in some. But anyway, um, the, the guide covers basic builds and components of aquaponics and that sort of thing, how to run the system, cycle the system. I've recently added a more extensive troubleshooting guide for bell siphons and those little beds like the bathtub over there. Once I um, nut out how I'm going to do it in the new systems, little modules on those will be uploaded to the guide as well. So it's just something that's going to be added on to continuously. Uh, thank you very much to everyone who's purchased it already. I've had some really great feedback, really appreciate the support. And again, um, the link will be down below and it is $9.95 US because I keep forgetting to tell people that. So anyway, that's enough of me rambling on, back to the vid. I was also talking yesterday to a supporter, Alan. G'day mate, if you're watching. And he was saying that he was going to have a crack at um, Afnan Aquaponics gutter growing uh, method. It's basically a channel with some pots in it and the water floods uh, floods and drains. It's a fantastic little system. Um, it's the same Afnan who has pretty much all developed the uh, bell siphon into what it is today. So definitely please go check out um, Afnan's channel, show him some love and his website link will be down there as well. Um, so that's another method you could potentially use and something I've thought about using myself. Uh, now something um, that I mentioned to Alan was I was sprouting grain in our grow beds um, for our chooks when we had chickens. Yes Rob, I'm getting chickens again. Um, so uh, what I'll do is I'll give you a bit of a look at some footage I posted to YouTube years ago. So this is the little sprouting setup we have in the grow bed. Basically what we have is the buckets with the holes in the base and they're sitting inside these flower pots with a couple of holes cut in the base of them. That allows water to come through and then through the holes in the base of these little buckets. Now, we've got the water coming in. Well, actually, we'll move to another bucket, make it a little bit easier to see. Um, you can probably make out the water between those grains there. And the siphon's going to initiate and all that water will just drain away again. So basically what you've got is the water coming in, hydrating the, um, the wheat berries and then draining out again. So it's keeping them fresh. We're not getting that funky smell we were getting in the tower system over summer. And yeah, it's just a great way, I think, to sprout these guys. So just to show you these grains here, these are grains that I put in yesterday. And they're just starting to get their little um, shoots and roots form. Over the other end, we have the grain that went in the day before. And as you can see, there's a little bit of greenery emerging from those guys. And this here, is the grain from three days ago. So well and truly got their greens showing on some of them. And they're the ones that I'll be taking out in a minute and feeding to the chooks. So just back to the um, potato bed here. And those little uh, pot rings is something I'm definitely going to be looking into when I use these pouches in the larger tray. Basically set up some of those rings so I can lift pouches in and out without disturbing the clay and having to muck around in the bed themselves. Uh, makes it very easy for a quick change. And having the clay um, around the base like here um, will you know look after any of those algae issues but if you've looked at Afnan's video well after you've finished watching this one go look at Afnan's videos and just the amount of growth of green matter over the top of the gutters pretty much all would block out the majority of the sunlight so you wouldn't really have an issue with the um, algae growing in the base of those little gutters so yeah I think it's just a really easy quick change system and yes when we do get chickens again I will be sprouting my grain in the aquaponics um, because they appear to love it. And once again, I would like to thank all you folks who have bought a copy of our online interactive guide. 
really do appreciate the support folks and if you're curious there is that link down in the description that I mentioned before um, so starting to get a load of questions through there and yeah, sending out the answers so I hope they're helping everyone who's um, sent through the PMs uh, I'd also like to thank all you folks who do come along every week and check out the videos give them a thumbs up and leave your comments down below got through a load of them this week I think I've got about two more weeks to catch up on and then I should be back to um, yeah only having a couple of months from wages ago to catch up on so um, I hope the answers I've given you folks there have helped as well and of course I really do need to thank you folks who are supporting the channel through the YouTube membership platform and also our farm your own yard supporters page thank you very much guys but I will pretty much well leave it there I do hope you folks are all well and happy and your gardens and aquaponics are booming and I'll catch you next week cheers folks and happy growing Here he is. And as you can tell, the girls really do like these sprouts. It doesn't take them long to polish them off at all. Funnily enough, the girls leave most of the grain that has green on it and they go straight for the sprouted part. So that's another reason why I thought that it would be a good idea just to go with the semi-sprouted rather than the long green sprouts. So there you go folks, there's my little take on using the aquaponic flood and drain beds to sprout some grain for the chooks. It's been going for about two weeks now.